Welcome back. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And of course, uh, moving on uh, with our conversations this morning. Time to look at what the papers have to say. And But before we go to the first paper, Messi Bopo is also here with me. Uh, Messi, it's a great, great uh, Wednesday morning. Um, I can't wait to see what the papers have today. Some very interesting stories. So we have those here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Very interesting indeed. stories, indeed. Uh, Kofi. Uh, it's good to see you this morning on the set as well. Yes, indeed. Uh, we just get head straight to the conversation. Always at, at this time, we get to look at the papers, uh, various papers that we have, and of course, have an analyst share their thoughts on it. Uh, this morning, Tunde Kolawale will be joining us. Tunde Kolawale, if you're no, we, we, we have. I think a, we have a, Andy. A, a, Andy, Andy. TV. Oh, no. oh, so that's a default setting, Andy. Uh, if you can hear us, uh, it's good to have you join us. Thank you. All right, then. But let's start off with the Daily Trust newspaper. Boldly written, it says, politicians move to bypass cash withdrawal limit. Politicians move to bypass cash withdrawal limit. That's uh, what you have on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And underneath, there are several writers. It says, Chieftains collect agents' account details in Nasarawa, a presidential candidate to spend 1.8 billion naira on agents. On wow, that's a lot. APC Mum as PDP Labour Party kicks, and then you have it won't affect our campaigns. NNPP and the PR uh, scored as say policy will force a change. Activists are saying. Two billion dollars per grid maintenance expansion ongoing. The federal government is saying now and that's away from election spending. And so there's a lot of money that would just be going around. Stakeholders approve Dangote cement and share buy back. Tunubu in Kaduna vows to eliminate bandits. And the question would be how? Because how is the question? Very constant, dominant question. And every time, you know, someone is saying something to you, how, how, how? Southeast PVC collection is slow. Start amid rising insecurity. PVC collection in, is in slow start amid uh, rising insecurity. Women arraigned for assaulting police officer and Malamis committee working to recover stamp duties. Uh, that's what the president is saying. I'll restore peace, improve mining in Plateau. Really, I think it was quoted to say, but is it just in Plateau State? Because this is just also saying, uh, nodding to the fact that, yes, there's mining going on, especially at a time where you don't have uh, the states in charge of their resources constitutionally. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. We have the nation up next, the uh, top stories on the nation front page. We have banks getting... Uh, marching, get marching orders to sell off Disco's shares. Uh, quite interesting. A government explains sack of core investors targets 22,000 megawatts. Okay. Um, I think uh, we will take, we, we can be not surprised with the performance of some of these Disco's. Under the nameplate of um, uh, the Nation newspaper, you can see that headline Killers of Unilorin Female Student to Die by Hanging Court Rules. It's uh, a long time ahead since I had uh, last time I had such uh, a ruling with IU in office. No deal with Atiku says Wiki. Uh, how to end petrol crisis by reps? Oh wow, they should put that in the book. Uh, agency search to partner. Oyetola, Oyetola. I didn't hire twelve thousand workers in Osho. Fourteen persons, twenty-two cows die in road crash. Uh, Tinubu promise to end promises to end banditry terrorism in northwest. CBN abuse Naira and go to jail will be promises to end stealing in government. Our headlines on the front page of uh, um, the nation. Nothing on Arise TV today. So I think let's <laughs> go. Uh, well, we have the Punch newspaper this morning, 2023. INEC vows prosecution of voters, card buyers and sellers. Well, that's a lot. INEC vows prosecution of votes, voters, card buyers or vote whatever. I mean, if you talk about those who are buying votes and selling votes, that's what INEC is quoted to say. Commission insists on beavers to combat PVC fraud. Please working with INEC to track Rigas, uh, 
force headquarters is quoted to say this is this a ride is underneath the board caption and just before we move away nigeria leads in yam production exports none <laughs> oh wow such an irony reps direct nnpc to end petrol scarcity even though you have uh, uh the dss also saying hey the ultimatum that's given for the eight hours after it seems like uh the situation has actually uh, been different especially after all of that now senate postpones hearing on cash withdrawal limit and fake soldier in court of for terrorism or terrorizing lagos community and uh majestic mercy secures argentina world cups final sport <laughs> and they say he's the goat the greatest of all time just in case you're wondering uh, well, I think that that's so much we can take. There are interesting headlines, but for the want of time, we need to move away. All right. The last one is, uh, the, is this day on Wednesday. Um, the fair big one there, Wiki. I would have won PDP primary if it weren't manipulated. I think he's uh, slowly and gradually telling his heart, you know, what's behind uh, his agitation. Says he would have won the PDP primary if it weren't manipulated. He insists he doesn't have any rift with a tiku. Ex-VP Okoa, uh, PDP governor, salutes Rivers governor at uh, 55. Atiku put out uh, a congratulatory message to uh, Wiki in the papers uh, as he celebrated his 55th birthday yesterday. Uh, interesting. Um, this day is still holding on to that fight, <laughs> the argument and the disagreement with the Tinubu camp. Uh, whilst the nation didn't have anything on it today, this day uh, will belong to Dr. Rice family. Uh, they put out a headline. It's under, under the nameplate of um, the paper. Alake uh, Onanuga's allegations. So Baigbena clears air, challenges them uh, to present their candidate for debates. <laughs> uh, interesting. And the writer to that uh, reiterates journalists, not the opponents in 2023, insists uh, resort to blackmail, fake news, bullying, uh, bullying won't work. Uh, right, resort to uh, blackmail, fake news, bullying. Uh, won't work. Uh, more from the paper. U.S. Africa Summit. Buhari restates 30 gigawatt electricity target by 2030. And uh, uh, Obi and Kogi pledges to make Nigeria a producing nation are uh, some of the headlines on the front page of, uh, of this. So let's uh, bring in at this point uh, Andy Akpotiva, who is uh, our guest analyst on the program this morning. He is um, a nation builder, a thinker, and author, author Andy. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Great to be here. All right, all right. Let's start with this uh, look at um, the cash withdrawal limit. Uh, the lead story on the front page of uh, front page of, of Daily Trust today. Uh, we hear politicians are moving to bypass a cash withdrawal limit. You know, uh, chieftains collect agents' account details in Nasara. Some some underhand moves and tactics going on uh, with the politicians so just to beat the CBN's uh, rule. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, we are just in a joke. We are just in a joke. Um, and, and let me tell you why I've just said this. If this had been said, or this policy had been uh, constructed brought about in developed society, you would hear how that... Uh, there will be a potpourri of uh, of ideas from those who are the proponents and those who are the you know opponents of this. They will be on TV, they will be on radio, they will be conversing their positions, presenting facts around why it should be or why it should not be. But in Nigeria, what we hear is the National Assembly calls the CBN and says to them. Can you just stop this? And I'm wondering, are we a joke? Are we really, you know, created, permit my use of this word, created after the image and the likeness of God? Who always converses ideas? He wanted to make man, and he was consulting the others and saying, come, let us make man in our image. You know, are we really, you know, designed after the likeness of him that today, a few people in the first instance wanted to bring a policy and they just sat 
um, uh, and, and they were going to adjust the fiscal policies. They did not consult who is the monetary angle, which is the Ministry of Finance, who is really responsible for uh, those kinds of adjustments. The CBN is not responsible for those kinds of adjustments. Now they didn't. Now to make matters worse, the National Assembly and politicians are sitting and also making the same mistake. And I'm wondering what kind of people are we? It's yeah, just a joke. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, um, TV stations and politicians uh, and uh, radio stations should reach out to these politicians and CBN. And, and let's have a debate, a national debate. I have followed so closely some debates, you know, in America on CNN, how that they are on both on the floor, they are having, you know, serious conversations around some policy statements on CNN, they are having those conversations and everything. But in Nigeria, it's a command and rule kind of thing. You know, we are still very deeply immersed in that dictatorial military, you know, system where one man believes that he knows it all. It's, it's, it's such a joke, Koki, I'm telling you. It's such a joke. Well, um, let's also look at, uh, turn our attention to the Punch newspaper ahead of the 2023 elections. INEC vows prosecution of voters, card buyers or vote buying and, you know, sellers of this vote. Um, what are your thoughts? Because it's, it's one of the factors that will shape the 2023 elections. We saw that, uh, you know, the pre-elections, the elections that happened before 2023 elections, vote buying quite dominant. Do you think that the umpire has what it takes? Uh, they've been empowered enough by the law, specifically stated, well spelt out, you know, to carry uh, the act of prosecution of those who will be involved in buying and selling a vote. My dear, another big joke, you know, um, and I say this because how empowered is INEC to prosecute? Is INEC the Nigerian police, police service? How empowered are they? Only INEC will prosecute those who are spending money, you know, more than they should spend for election. And they are not banks. They are not DSA. Only INEC will. They are just, it's just everything is a joke in Nigeria. And, and that Nigerians are buying this, um, this, I want to be very careful, you know, with my choice of words. Nigerians are buying this nonsense from these politicians. You know, it shocks me, beats me hollow. How is INEC going to be able to prosecute them? Is INEC police? I can INEC take anybody to court? If the police says they are not going to prepare the matter, they are not going to prepare the case and take it to court, what would INEC do? How can INEC do it? Is, uh, journalists, people should ask them, how can you do it? If my position is clear, on who should take, you know, criminals, or who should take uh, those who have been uh, said to have committed a crime to the court, who should take them? It's police. The police are lawyers. The members of the police are lawyers to politicians. You don't know this reality. It's a big joke. Politicians will even go to the police station and go and enter into a nolly prosecute and carry those people out of the police station. What will happen? They will send the attorney generals to go and enter a nolly on, on behalf of the state for those people who would have done, who they would have used to do those things. What the hell? It's a joke. Everything is a joke, my sister. I'm telling you. For the sake of speaking, that's why we are speaking, but they are not serious about addressing the basic issues that are confronting Nigeria. The issues that once addressed, Nigeria is going to be again on the pedestal of growth, again on the journey towards you know becoming one of the greatest nations on earth. Those basic things, they are not willing to address them. They are just beating around the bush, you know, and turning around like uh, what we would say. Andy, uh, quickly, like before Kofi comes chair. in, uh, before Kofi comes in, I I'd like to ask, because it's also another issue, the fact that the commission is insisting on the beavers as uh, a means to combat PVC fraud or rigging of the elections. Do, do you really trust in this technology and its deployment? So it's as a means, I didn't hear that, that they are insisting on beavers as a means of what? Commission insists on beavers to combat PVC fraud. And my question is, do you trust, you know, the deployment of the beavers as a technology, uh, you know, to combat election rigging and the fraud in the election? Politicians are ahead of 
you know, INEC already. Um, I don't want to speak to these things on national TV. No, but Oppositions are ahead of you, INEC already. As, 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 long, as, as long as, you know, you have the fact the, to it, you have what, the right to you, speak to it. Are you seeing what they are doing with the frequent and regular burning of INEC offices across the nation? Politicians are ahead of INEC already. And INEC is not the security you know, um, um, uh, institution in this country. They must, they must sit with other stakeholders to make this work. They would fail to do these basic things. They would fail to contact the security people to do what should be done. Uh, Beavers would just be um, one thing that would not even address the nonsense things that will happen in this election. I have said, if you go to my Facebook page, you will see I have posted a lot of things around this debate, you know, um, but not to overflow the, the, the dead horse. Um, I would just say that I wish them well around their optimism with the use of the beavers. All right, uh, quite interesting. Let, let's, let's look at um, the situation in the uh, People's Democratic Party. Uh, uh, yes, a week ago, Governor River State is still talking and still blowing hot. And this day, it gives uh, space to that in its uh, lead story. Wiki says he would have won the PDP primary if it weren't manipulated. That's where the back and forth is at right now. Uh, this comes as um, he's insisting, the paper says, he doesn't have any rift with Atiku Abubakar. And Atiku himself yesterday uh, took out, uh, I think, a page in a national daily to wish um uh, Wiki, well, uh, happy birthday. Okoa and some PDP governors also saluted Wiki on his birthday. So what are your thoughts on, on where we are right now in this entire drama? They are trying to um, get Nigerians to be emotional. I'm not interested in this Wiki's quarrel with Atiku and Atiku's quarrel with Wiki. I'm interested in what we need to talk about to improve Nigeria. I'm interested in APC telling us the Portacot refinery will start working by December. Taking our money, millions of dollars, to go and do what they call revamping of the Portacot refinery. Today it is not working. And there is scarcity of petroleum, they are big, they are, you know, I'm interested in those matters. Where is, why is Wiki and PDP not speaking to those issues? They climb the post of the rostrum at the podium, and they start talking, of all, of spewing all kinds of gibberish, you know, on the, on the, on the podium. Um, Wiki will speak today, I'm not fighting, who is interested in your uh, husband and wife matter? Who is interested in it? Can you people just address Nigeria, how Nigeria can move forward? How we can stop this brain drain? How can how we can stop this Jaffa uh, syndrome? Nigerians are leaving this country in droves and in numbers because the leadership is failing on all levels. And the leaders that we focus, right? I will call them leaders. And the dealers that we have there who are currently in position of authority have busy giving us sensationalism. They are discussing about what kind of boxers they are wearing, what is the color of it, what kind of hair their wives made, what kind of nails their wives made, who is interested in all those jokes. Discuss the real issues that will make Nigeria move forward. Discuss about the Porta Court refinery that you will spend money on. Discuss about the money you took to go and buy um, applications to use to combat evil um, in our land. Yes, you are not doing it. Discuss these basic things. Discuss about the amount of money you see that you invested in rice production. Yes, we are still buying a bag of rice for 45,000, 50,000. I discuss about these things. I'm not interested in your husband and wife matters. You know, the matters that concern whatever you and Atiko have discussed that does not affect you know, how the price of fish or how the price of snow is going to change in the, in the market. We can continue discussing those things and be having the ears and the interest of Nigerians who are interested in them. But I'm sure that there are a lot of Nigerians who are rather interested in address, hearing them address the real issues. We case to be standing on national TV and be saying that the APC has failed. APC said the Portacourt refinery was going to get back and be producing. They told us this thing when they were taking money to go and they are no best turn around and say that today nothing is working and he's talking about articles rift. I mean, I'm just so disappointed, you know, you know, um, about these people we call leaders who rather should be addressed as villains. Okay, um, uh, let's just also quickly look at the fact that, you know, with all of that, uh, some persons have thought that 
uh, this policy is actually rather hasty and some people are very critical of it. So we're looking I hear a lot of noise in the back. I hear a lot of noise in the background, right? Um, so it's difficult to actually pick what you are saying. If you can please repeat it, I would be really very glad. Okay, so um, it's about the uh, withdrawal cash withdrawal limits and the arguments surrounding it, and and some people have said that's on a daily trust. Uh, we're back at it, and you know, there's been several arguments that it's. A hasty policy, or does it saying yes is good, but is hasty? I mean, where do you stand in all of this? So, if, if that's what they are saying, in the fact that it's hasty, looking back, I, I thought you should converse, you should say what is wrong with the policy. You should not tell us that because it's hasty, it's bad. So, because somebody quickly finished addressing certain problems that was given in school. They said they're supposed to take like three hours to write it, and the person wrote it in 25 minutes. It makes that solution provided bad solution. I don't understand Nigerians. That's why I say it's a joke. I needed to hear them come on TV, come on radio. Those people who are against it, to come and tell us why these policies should not be. Let us have people canvas ideas. If you are really wealthy yourself, if you are really a politician and a leader, who knows? If you are not just, I don't want to say a junk, who is put there in position of authority. Come now and tell us what you think is wrong with this policy now. Come and tell us. Come and converse. Come and tell us the reasons you believe that if they should do something differently from what they are doing. When CBA should come and tell us why they think this is what Nigeria should be asking for. I don't know. I don't want to develop to that level yet. I have a few friends, you know, who said to me a couple of days back that, you know, um, like the developmental stage of Africa and Nigeria is at the lowest end. If you if you heard people, if you heard other societies talk about issues, you would understand that. I did not argue with you when you said it. You you will hear how that they are converting issues. They are speaking about it. The old nation will stand still. And they are converting ideas. Yeah, oh God Almighty, because it's hasty, uh, should now not do it. That's enough reason for me to suspend it because it's hasty. Okay, it's being hasty. What destruction is it going to bring about? What 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 level of nuances will be introduced into the system or noise will be introduced into the system if we implemented this now? I'll be no, but, but, Andy, I'm, I'm sure that you're conversant. So it, it's a conversation that we're going to have in the course of, uh, you know, the, the breakfast on the show uh, at the hour of 8 o'clock. So maybe we don't need to dwell so much on it. But if you talk about the arguments that has been put against it, uh, this has been a lot, especially for those who are in the business of rendering services. I mean, I'm sure you're, uh, you know the POS uh, service or agents, you know, across different parts of the country. Uh, that is a major concern. And the fact that this person's probably might just be out of business, you know, is another issue that has been put at the front burner. But um, uh, quickly to that other one, I, I, I'd like to share your thoughts on the Punch newspaper. Nigeria leads in yam production, exports none. That's what the federal government is saying. Do you think this is an irony? It is as, it is as pathetic, it is as ludicrous, it is as ridiculous, as preposterous as it is to say that we are living in rice production. Go to the market now. Yeah, not rice. We are... We are we are, we are just uh, defiling all the known economic principle. You know, the simple law of demand says when demand is, is higher than supply, price will go up. But when supply trumps demand, when there is so much supply and fewer demand is pursuing, price will crack. They are telling us that we are producing rice in quantum. They lied to us and showed us one pyramid of rice. And my sister, you go to the market now. Tell me why a, a bag of rice is still selling at 48,000, 45,000 naira, even though we are living in it. 
And it's not rice. And it's not rice. It's yam. Yam production, not yam. I know. I know. I know. I know it's yam. It's the same thing there. You are living in yam production. And the prices of yam, they have become um, uh, uh, within the reach of the poor in our country. I don't understand. The whole lies. This government is, is full of lies. The government, the leader of the government, the spokespeople in the government, the whole lack. You know why they think they can continue to do this? Because Nigerians just die this lie. We are not confirming. We are not, we are not going back to check whether this is. It's only when Peter Obi speaks. That's why you will see them going to uh, fact check. Fact check. My, 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 fact check what? When you are not fact checking your lying government, your terrible government, you are not fact checking your lying, terrible government that you have, that is that producing them. They're producing rice. Please let them meet me this morning. All right, uh, Andy, thank you so much uh, for your time. We will leave it at that. And of course, uh, we appreciate you joining us, you know, and to give us your uh, fantastic analysis as always. Look forward to having you again. Thank you, Kofi. Kofi, please ask your government why the water court refinery is not working yet. Why they took our money to go and revamp the water court refinery and they are not working yet. Why we still have long queues everywhere across the country. Fair for a price that is higher than what they declared. Ask those lying government people, officials. Let them come and tell you why. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy Akpotive, for your time. Indeed, Andy Akpotive is uh, an author, uh, a nation builder, and a thinker. He's been a guest on Half the Press uh, right here on The Breakfast. We'll take a break now. When we return, we look at some uh, reactions uh, to the Central Bank of Nigeria's cash withdrawal limits. Uh, that's a new comment coming from a legal practitioner. It says it's illegal what the central bank is doing. We'll discuss that with analysis up next. Stay with us.